uh, back in September 2020, uh, when we made the budgeting process public, we started off with the first stakeholder town hall meeting. At that meeting, I made it clear that this year we're making the process more inclusive. So unlike last year, when we held meetings at three locations, this year meetings were held at each of the seven geopolitical zones in Oyo State. The contribution of the stakeholders at those town hall meetings determine some of the content of this 2021 budget, which I have chosen to tag a budget of continued consolidation. Before I begin my presentation, I would like to say a big thank you to, to Mr. Speaker, uh, Right Honorable Adebo Gundoi, and all honorable members of this ninth assembly. The success that we have recorded so far are due to your continuous support of our fiscal policies. This has led to an impactful implementation of the various elements that drive our plans. The roadmap for accelerated development in Oyo State, 2019 to 2023. In the past year, we have made significant progress in the actualization of our plans for Oyo State. We have been able to lower our infrastructural deficit, make improvements in healthcare delivery, improve the quality of education, and achieve milestones in our security system. Once again, I want to say thank you for your cooperation. We remain bullish in our approach to developing Oyo State. And let me share one of our biggest wins in the last year. You will recall that in my 2020 budget presentation, I had stated that from January 2020, we will be recording a monthly internally generated revenue IGR of 3 billion Naira. I'm happy to report to you that despite the effect of the COVID-19 pandemic on the economy, we were just less than 200 million Naira shy of our targets monthly. As of September 2020, we had recorded an IGR of 25.6 billion Naira. And using the half year figures that represented a 26.4% increase in IGR year on year. So for those that kept wondering how have we been getting money to carry out some of the projects? Uh, this is one of the secrets that I just uh, uh, unveiled right now. So your state's IGR is presently about 32% of actual aggregate revenue. Yes, we still have not achieved a total dependence on the state income outside of federal allocation to fund the budget. Slowly, but surely, we're getting there. For the 2021 budget, our plan is to increase our annual IGR to 102 billion, 824 million, 207,213 naira for the six cover. It's a big order. Is a tall order. Uh, but we hope to achieve this by widening the tax net to bring in more taxpayers into the system. But never 
by increasing taxes on our people. So permit me to share some of our other wins from the 2020 fiscal year. You may recall, uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, that one of the issues I highlighted that has been facing our state's budget is underperformance. By the end of quarter one, 2019, budget performance was 38%. We were determined to increase this and had set a mark of 70% performance. Honorable members of the House, although we have not yet met up with our targets, our budget performance as of now is above average at 50.32%. We accomplished this despite the economic shock induced by the pandemic. Let me quickly state that our use of alternative project funding approach, APFA, the Contractors Project Financing Scheme, as well as targeted loans, have gone a long way to helping us to improve our budget performance. This year, we are again pegging our budget performance goal at 70%. Since we have been able to increase by 12 percent points in performance over 2019 thus far, despite the economic challenges we faced, an additional 20 percent point increase should be attainable. At this point, I would like to crave your indulgence, Mr. Speaker, sir, and honorable members of the House. Permit me to refer to our 2020 budget presentation. I would like to do a comparative analysis of 2020 and 2021 plans while taking into cognizance our achievements so far. As promised, we prioritize the completion of ongoing infrastructure projects. For example, the 65-kilometer Moniya Ijaye Ishenyi Road, which was awarded at the time of our budget presentation last year, is already at 65% completion. We have also approved and started reconstructing the 21-kilometer airport Ajia New Express Road with a spot to Amuloko through alternative project funding model on design, build, and finance basis. Also, the now famous Idiakwe Bashanu Akobo Odogbo Barracks Road, which was mismanaged by the previous contractor, has been reawarded and the new contractors have mobilized to site. Other ongoing road projects are the 12 kilometer Akwete Awoto Akufo Road, the 3 kilometer Ondaji Stadium Lautek Second Gate Road, 5 kilometer Gedu Oroki Sabo Ashipa Road, the 12.5 kilometer dualization of Challenge Odon Elewe Akpata. The 10 kilometer Shaki Township Road dualization, and we have also awarded the 44.7 kilometers Shaki Ogoro Igoro Road. <laughs> Additionally, we embarked on the remodeling of the Lake and Salami Sports Complex, Adama Singba Ibadan. The project is ongoing. We are building four bus terminals at Iwo Road, New Ife Road, Challenge, and Ojo in Ibadan. We are also developing a bike and bus terminal at Agori Gate, Ibadan. You may also recall that the Akesan market, raised down by an inferno in January 2020, is being rebuilt. Well, in spite of all of this, we still need to undertake many more projects. 
there's need to further reduce our infrastructure deficit. Therefore, our budget for infrastructure is a total sum of 46 billion, 67 million, 695,661 Naira 13 cover, representing 17.27% of the total budget sum. This is an increase from 33.66 billion Naira for infrastructure in our 2020, 2020 budget. On education, let me report that we are at the verge of completing the recruitment of 5,000 teachers for our state-owned secondary schools. So we are gradually strengthening our education system. As of June 2020, we have started 236 projects in, the, in this sector, some of which are ongoing. These projects include the construction of schools and classrooms, construction of early child development centers, <coughs> renovation of schools, installation of boreholes, supply of furniture and sports equipment, and other procurements. We also procure textbooks in course subject areas for the pupils and students in our primary and secondary schools. This budget year, we plan to do even more. We still need more teaching and non-teaching staffs, as well as the building and equipping of more schools. Mr. Speaker, sir, honorable members of the House, just three days ago, the National Universities Commission announced the Memorandum of Understanding regarding the ownership of the Lado Kiakintola University of Technology. Lactech Ogumasha, which we signed with the Oshun State Government. As of now, uh, Lactech is only owned by the Oyo State Government. <laughs> so for these reasons, the education sector leads in terms of budgetary allocation of 56 billion 348 million 375,635 naira 55 cover, representing 21% of the total budget. This is an increase of about 12 billion naira over last year's budget. Uh, somebody once said that. Uh, the way out of poverty is actually not money. You can give people money, they will still be poor at the end of the day. That is why we see uh, former uh, political office holders that have access to uh, the common uh, uh, fund and look out for them Four years after, they are broke. So, to tackle poverty, we don't need money. We need knowledge. And that is why for us, education is key. And 21% is well above the UNESCO recommendation. Our administration is all about boosting the economy. This is to be driven by agribusiness. So in the last year, we have not shied away from entering into partnerships, both local and international, that will bring about the needed development in our state. We initiated a bilateral agreement with the International Institute of Tropical Agriculture, ITA, by the way on the Start Them Early program step in agribusiness for the benefit of our youth and development of the agricultural sector. We started the upgrade and expansion 
of the former Oyo State Agricultural Development Program, OISADEP headquarters in Shaki Town, now known as the Oyo State Agribusiness Development Authority, OISADEP headquarters. So the sighting of these headquarters in Shaki is in recognition of the economic importance of Okeogu to our dear states. And by the way, I'm spending my birthday at the Oisada headquarters because now, well, some of you are not invited. Okay, some are invited because now we have uh, uh, a governor's lodge in there and uh, uh, over the next uh, uh, one year, uh, I plan to keep spending between one week and 10 days at that lodge. Uh, so effectively, for every four months, governance, <clears throat> governance will move to Shaki for a week plus. <clears throat> to underscore the importance of agriculture to our economy, the sector received an allocation of the sum of nine billion five hundred and seventy five million forty nine thousand nine hundred and twenty three naira fourteen cobo, which is three point six percent of the total budget. Distinguished members of the House, the provision of qualitative health care services constitutes a major priority of this administration. Towards ensuring improved access to high quality and affordable health care services to the people, especially among vul vulnerable groups, we conducted a free health mission across the state and procured medical equipment and drugs for the mission. We also procured ambulances, CT scan with transport incubator, and other vital medical equipment for state-owned hospitals. We turned the COVID-19 pandemic into an instrument of development. As a result, we now have the Infectious Disease Center in Olodo as well as the upgraded Shaki Specialist Hospital. We also upgraded the facilities at Agbami Chest Center and three primary healthcare centers uh, at uh, Awe, also uh, uh, at uh, Igora, and uh, 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 at uh, the one next to uh, Baba at uh, uh, Oyo, Atiba. Yeah, we've done uh, all of this, but in addition, we plan to upgrade one primary health care center in each of the 351 wards in Oyo State. The process is ongoing. <laughs> to continue facilitating the good work we're doing in this sector, we're proposing a budgetary allocation of 13 billion 292 million 525,429 naira 28 cover, which represents 4.9% of the total budget. On security, last year we promised to procure new firefighting trucks, ambulances, and communication equipment to enhance the safety of residents of our state. Mr. Speaker, sir, honorable members of the House, I'm happy to report that we have done all this and more. The fire service has been upgraded from a department to an agency, and we procured four firefighting trucks for the agency. We also procured patrol vehicles for the security operatives. We expanded the security control room and city watch facilities at the Ohio State Security Trust Fund headquarters. Just last week, 
The Ohio State Security Network, codenamed Amatekun, became operational in Ohio State. And I firmly believe that very soon we will begin to feel their impact. It's better to see their impact on uh, uh, bad people. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Speaker, sir, distinguished members of the Ohio State House of Assembly, please permit me at this point to present to you the Ohio State 2021 budget proposal. The total budget sum is $266,644,200,000. Three hundred and five naira for cover. This sum represents fifty-three point one six percent increase over the twenty twenty revised budget. Let me emphasize that the tenets of the Federation's Fiscal Sustainability Plan (FSP) and other development aspirations were used as a guide in the preparation of the 2021 budget. Recurrent expenditure is 136 billion, 262 million, 990,009 naira, 41 cobo. 136, 262, 990, 009.41. While the capital expenditure is 130 billion, 308, 81,283,295 naira, 63 cover. Our aspiration is to have a budget where the capital expenditure is higher than the recurrent expenditure, as this will lead to more development. A comparison between these figures and the total expenditure in the 2020 budget shows that we have been able to shave off about 2 billion naira in the difference between the recurrent and capital expenditure. If we continue this way, in the next couple of years, we'll be talking about the capital expenditure exceeding recurrent expenditure, and that's where we really want to be. Uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, I must also mention that we have been able to resolve some of the issues around moribund industries in Ohio State. As you are aware, these have been a source of worry to members of this assembly, and indeed, the entire people of Ohio State. We have been able to put back in business state enterprises that have been laying waste for decades. Among these moribund industries are the Peseta Quarry and Asphalt Plant in Jaya. Now we're being told that uh, they're looking for trucks to hire. They're not able to meet the demand uh, 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 that the market has placed on them. We have done the same thing for the Peseta Fruit Processing Plant in Oko and the Agbo shopping complex in Ibadan. It will also please you to know that we have commenced the preparation of the 20-year Ohio State Development Plan, 2021 to 2040. Ohio State has never had such an overhacking blueprint. The plan, when completed, will facilitate a speedy socio-economic development with the medium-term sector strategy and medium term expenditure framework. It has once again been my honor to present this budget proposal to you, Mr. Speaker, sir, and the distinguished honorable members of the House. It is my prayer that you give our proposal the usual consideration in a timely manner so that implementation may commence and our states will continue on the path of accelerated development. God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria.
God bless you. Thank you.